I would think that the main users will be people who um, trigger discussions where you sit with a group of people and then you um, dive into one of these principles and uh, think about how to implement it. So it's more set sessions which have a training character or yeah, a wider discussion and then you pick one or two principles and look into good practices and um, on how, how to actually do it and what works and what does not work so well for your specific discipline, your disciplinary community. Well, since gender equality forms part of RRI, I think one of the big questions uh, is how do you integrate the gender perspective, which is very complex in itself. You know, there's been like uh, 10, 15 years of funding going on by the European Commission in this area. There are lots of resources have been produced, lots of projects have been done. It's an ongoing effort and we know how complicated it is really to integrate uh, gender perspective. Uh, into research and now it gets even more complicated because you have all these other elements of uh, responsible research innovation. I think the, the website, the RRI tools, is a perfect place to really initiate a discussion on, on, on establishing links, collaborations with these other areas of responsible research and innovation. Uh, companies um, and possibly in particular small companies and entrepreneurs may be able to use the toolkit in order to find orientation on what they need to do, um, for example again with regards to compliance. So if a company, in particular small companies, often have the issue that they know that there are regulations that they have to comply with but they don't know exactly what those are and how to do that. Again data protection is a very good example, there's a, a large amount of regulation out there and if the toolkit allows companies and other stakeholders to identify what the issues are and how they can be addressed, I think that would be very beneficial to them. Um, science educators will be looking for material uh, that they can use within their, their education and the toolkit will provide them with a, a number of uh, good practice, uh, especially where they can see how uh, RI has been introduced into, into science education. That, that not only goes into in, in secondary education but also in higher education. There are all, all sorts of ways and means in which you can introduce and link uh, RI to, to, for example, a course in organic chemistry or if, if you teach green chemistry there, there are loads and loads of opportunities in which you can link RI to it. It's just that you, as, a, as an educator you need to be made aware that those possibilities actually exist. And the, and, and, and the website, our RI toolkit, can play an important role in that. The benefit of the, to the funders and researchers in particular of the toolkit is, for, for the first time, we've got an organized set of resources around RRI, starting at the very simple, what it is, and going all the way to how it's implemented, who's going to use it, uh, what are the benefits to it, um, how it's going to be assessed, how you're going to monitor, monitor it afterwards, and how you're going to make sure that it's actually working. And ultimately, do we have a better system, a better research system than we've got at the moment? Great resource. <laughs>